Okay, our next assignment and the last assignment that, that I am responsible for grading before our final project, which will be scored by full class critique. You can find under assignment sheets, this is assignment nine, and it's our digital painting assignment. So the reason the assignment sheet page is important for this is not only do you have just a rundown of the basic criteria of the assignment and how to meet its minimum requirements, right? It kind of defines digital painting as imagery that you build on top of basic shapes, um, looking at but not compositing reference images. So we're not going to be building on top of photos, but we are going to be looking at the photo reference just like we would look at a photograph in order to do a drawing or a painting in a in a painting class um, but as we build we're not going to create finished line work right the line work we might do might just be sketchy line work underneath but it, it won't be in the finish and that's the big difference between digital painting and digital coloring digital painting does not include line art Right. Whereas digital coloring is always behind a real or implied outline. And what we're aiming for is a full rendering or painting made up entirely of color and value shapes with different edge qualities and transparencies. So this is really based on a lot of different hard edge and soft edge shapes in different colors that we layer together to make an image. The content, the subject matter is going to be a painting of an animal or a celebrity, or it can be just anyone that's important to you. It can be a self-portrait. So a human portrait or an animal portrait. If it's an animal, it should be head to toe. If it's a person, it, it only needs to be kind of their head, their shoulders on up, right? We're going to start the process by doing thumbnail sketches uh, to find a concept and a composition that appeals to us. We will submit um, our sketches as part of the assignment, right? So I want to know how you'll start these. And then it's going to finish with as much of a finished painting as possible, but it just takes time to build it up. So your painting, your rendering can be completed in any style. This does not need to be representational, though we often think of digital painting as being like a photorealistic way of painting. It can be cartoony, it can be psychedelic, it can be, you know, kind of graffiti inspired, whatever you want. But it needs to be relevant to your own point of view and your personal portfolio, right? So you can do an animal painting as a caricature. You know, I think I might take my dog and take some liberties with it, right? It's not always so fun to just try to match a photograph. And you can even do kind of combinations making a celebrity into an animal things like that. You can push it as far as you want. And we are not going to do a background. So this painting assignment is kind of finished without a background. You can put a background in if you want. It's not required. It's not part of the assignment. The benefit of not putting in a background is then it also kind of works as a spot illustration, right? And it can be used on Redbubble as a sticker or as a t-shirt image. So that's the goal. We're going to submit them as JPEGs to PhotoBucket. So they're going to just have white backgrounds behind them in PhotoBucket. Whether they're, they're realistic or whether they're caricatures, that's up to you. The first thing you need to figure out is what image you're going to use, right? And you need at least one good photo reference for this. So I'm going to use this one. It's great to have more than one, especially if you were going to take this really seriously. But this is just to learn the basic skills. And so with my photo reference, I'm going to make it a little bit easier for myself in Photoshop using some of my compositing skills. And I'm just going to use adjustments and auto tone it. Maybe bring out the highlights a little bit with levels. Just really looking at my dog. This is Heather, you know, just as an object on a, a white background, right? I might even take the rough area around her. So I really get a sense of the shape. There's her tail there. 
and delete it. Fill it with white, just as a reference. Right? So I'm really kind of just focused on her shapes and the edges. Now painting is something you get better at with practice. And digital painting is no different. It's just a new tool, right? But it has a lot of benefits, just like digital has a lot of, always has benefits over traditional media, but it also has some drawbacks. So one big drawback is we're not in our lab, so we don't have access, all of us, to tablets and to Photoshop. So now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and save that just as a JPEG. And I'll show you how you can do this from even a public computer. So I'm just using my laptop with a trackpad. You could do it with a mouse, maybe even a little bit more easily than with a trackpad. And easy is the wrong word, but you have access to all of this stuff. And you can just do it in a browser-based program like Photopea, which is also under our links page, just photopea.com. And yes, you can use you can use Procreate, you can use Paint Tool Sci, you can use any kind of raster program you like to do your digital painting. Now the key in all of those is to make sure that you're working in a resolution that can yield a, a high quality print. So we are looking for a minimum of eight by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch, but you can always go bigger than that. All right, so now that I've saved this, I can close Photoshop and show you how this works within Photopea. So I'm going to create What am I doing? <laughs> Don't want Photoshop anymore. I'm going to create a new new browser window. I'm just going to go to photopea.com and I am going to start by creating a brand new project. So that new project, I am going to make 350. It's resolution, which should be pixels per inch, but this says DPI. And then I'm going to change the measurement to inches, and I'm going to make it um, 11 inches wide by 14 inches tall with a white background. Create. Okay, then I'm going to open my reference into Photopea. So my Heather full body photo. There we have it. So now I have two tabs open in Photopea. I might have to switch to Photoshop just so I'm not always having to click on those advertisements, right? Okay, so here we go. You want to go to View, and Window, and you want to figure out how you can work on one and look at the other. So it's a lot how you set up your screen. So I'm going to take my reference photo and pull it out. Oh, I used to be able to do this in Photo P. But where there's a will, there's a way. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is actually close it and then just open that image. in preview, because all I have to do is be able to look at the image. So I'm going to view it in another window. I could even, um, I can even do this. I can even view it, drag the image into, if you don't have preview or an image viewer, into a web browser. 
that can decode your JPEG as well, your photo. But it's just like setting up in a uh, in an art studio your reference photo with your painting area. So I set this off to the side. I can make it smaller. And then I want access in my raster program to my canvas. and to my layers, and then eventually to my color palette, right? So because I only have one reference, my, my sketch is going to be basically this, right? But if I'm doing a caricature, I'm going to show you how to do some thumbnails, right? And if you If you're doing a portrait, there might be a few different ways you want to try to do that portrait, especially if you're going to exaggerate them or characterize them or um, stylize them. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to call that my thumbnails, and I'll do it with a, uh, a blue color, right? And then I know that my physical format is vertical. I made mine, you know, 11 inches wide, 14 inches tall by 350 pixels per inch. So usually I'll do like between three and five thumbnails for a project. But this one, I know all of the, the final uh, parameters I want, right? I'm going to have to get out of this soon. But I might try like exaggerating the size of Heather's head. Okay, okay, I want to put the head there and I want to make her paws really tiny, like this big. And then her body's out behind her, really small, like this. And that would be cute. Caricature idea one. Another is just doing it really straightforward, representationally, and kind of fitting her on the format because you get to make all these decisions as the artist, fitting her on the format this way. As you can see, your sketches don't need to be perfect, right? Another idea is to just make Heather into a person, like put her dog head up here and then put her on kind of human shoulders and make it like a regular portrait format. That's an option too. All of it will showcase digital painting and meet the criteria. So thumbnail sketches, you know, what approach do you want to go? Right. I might go for something a little cutesy. I haven't done that. I don't think I've ever really done that. So I'll call this the cute one. This is the worst thing to do with a trackpad. I have to write. This one is the, um, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay, the real one. And then this one's the portrait style. Okay, so these are my thumbnails. So what I'm going to do is now just show you how this works, working between Photo P and Photoshop, because I'm sick of this. <laughs> so I'm going to say File, Save as PSD. Right. Then I go to my Downloads. It will be called New Project PSD. I open up my Downloads, and if you're lucky enough to have Photoshop, I'm going to open that in Photoshop and then set it up the same way there. So I'm going to close Photo P. And now in Photoshop, 
there's a slight advantage. 